Come on, come on. Come on. Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. A day we've never seen, God. And we just want to give ourselves to you, God. We thank you. We praise you. How many have asked God, what is your purpose?
Praise the Lord, family. I said, praise the Lord, family. It is the first Sunday of a new year, and we ought to give God some praise. We made it. We made it. We made it. We made it into the 2021 year. How thankful we are that God has allowed us to come to see another year in which we've not seen before. What a blessing it is to be here in the land of the living. I know the Bible tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But the fact of the matter is God still has some things he wants us to do. That's the reason we're still here. Amen. You ought to give God a hand praise. If you believe that, if you receive that, you ought to bless his holy, holy name. For those of you who are here with us, the few of us, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We give God praise. We give him honor. And of course, we give him glory. That he has spared us one more time. We want to be mindful of those of you who are watching and or listening to us. We praise God for you. And we pray that as you have stepped into this new year, 2021, that you are optimistic, that you are excited about what God has planned for his people. Listen, before we get into the sick, the shut-in, and before we get into the bereaved list, we have something we want you to take a look at. So I'm going to ask that you would just watch this quick video. Come on and give God a hand praise for our friend, our brother, Deacon Donald Blue. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What a blessing it is when you can do anything for 32 years. Amen. We have a plaque for Deacon Blue. Of course, he's not aware of this. I just want to read it. Deacon Blue, we want you to know that we are proud of you, proud of your accomplishments, proud of your service to the greatest country in the world. 32 years of sacrifice sitting on the wall to make sure that our freedoms were still intact. The plaque reads simply, congratulations on your retirement, Colonel Donald Blue. 32 years of leadership and mentorship in the United States Army. We thank you for your service. May God continue to bless you. We will keep you in our hearts, and we pray for your continued safety. Presented in love as the date, of course, Pastor Leo R. Thomas Sr. and your Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church family, God will be glorified. Come on, come on, family, and praise God for our brother. We love you, Deacon Blue, and we appreciate you. We appreciate you. We'll have that here for you. Listen, family, real quick, we want to get to our sick and shut-in list, to our bereaved hearts. That way we can run to the Word of God. We're praying this morning for Brother Bobby Carr, who was diagnosed a few weeks back with COVID. We're praying for former member Brother Johnny Blue, who this past week, was um, identified as positive for COVID. Brother James McCullum, who we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, was positive for COVID. Sister Lydia Haley Clark has tested positive for COVID. I ask that you pray for her and for her family. We're praying for Sister Kathleen Overturf. We're play praying for Sister Evelyn Mitchell. We're praying for Brother James Ridgeway. We're praying for Sister Talia White, and we are continuing to pray for Sister Caritha Williamson. For the bereaved, we ask that you continue to pray for the Clements family, for those of you who were able to view the service via Zoom, for those who were there to participate in the service. We're greatly appreciative of you and your service unto the Lord. I ask that you continue to pray 
for Jeffrey, Walter, and for their families. But then also I ask that you would pray for the McConaco family, the Mojica family, and the Brumfield family. Uh, the McConaco's lost their father this past week on Friday. On Friday, and of course they are grieving. Uh, Sister Jasrin is a part of the audio video team here with us on Sunday mornings. I ask that you pray for her, pray for her entire family, as that they are in the midst of grieving the transition of their father. Amen? Pray with us. God, how we thank and how we praise thee, how we bless thee, Lord God, for blessing us to come once again to a new day, a new Sunday, a new year with new priorities, with new focuses, Lord God. God, we thank you that you spared us one more time. What a blessing it is to still be here in the land of the living. God, we honor you today. We honor you, Lord God, because you're God all by yourself. And that it is but by your grace and your mercy that you've allowed us to come today to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask that you would touch the hearts and the minds of those who are on the sick and the shut-in list. We ask, Lord God, that you would touch the hearts and the minds of those who are struggling with the loss, the transition of a loved one. We ask, Lord God, for your healing touch and power for those who have COVID and are trying to make their way through, not just here, for those who are associated with this church, but all over the world. God, we ask that you would just touch, lead, guide, and direct as only you can. Now, God, we ask that you would stop by and visit with these, your people, today. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would hover over this place, that you would fill our hearts, our mouths, and that all that we do, Lord God, would be glorifying and honoring unto you. We pray if there's someone listening today who does not know you in the pardon of their sins, we pray that as they are scribing New Year's resolutions, that at the top of the list, you would be the priority. That they would prioritize getting to know you and surrendering their lives unto you. We'll be careful to give you praise, to give you honor, and to give you glory. It's in the blessed name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Let all the people of God say, amen, amen, amen. Come on and give God some praise. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. I'd ask that you grab your Bibles, even for those of you who are at home, get to your sword, get to your sword. Uh, we've not come to entertain you. We want you to participate in the process of a worship and praise unto God, and you need your Bible to be able to do that. I'd ask that you would draw your attention to the book of Joshua, Joshua in the Old Testament, as you can see via video this morning that our new banners are up, our new theme is up, and we will attempt to unpack the scripture that is set before you from Joshua chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. Beginning at verse 6. Here is what you will find when you get there. I'm reading from the New Living Translation version of the Bible, and it simply reads... Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day 
and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. And he, here's our memory verse for the year, family. Pay, pay special attention to this, verse 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. From those verses, specifically from verse 6 through 9 of Joshua chapter 1, I want to use as a focal point as a theme this morning, for the few minutes we have left, great advice for advancing in 2021. Great advice for advancing in 2021. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. One of the most gratifying, heartwarming, and fulfilling benefits of ministry is coming in contact with people who have great potential. You can see it in everything they do. There is a sense of optimism, genuineness, hopefulness, and commitment to all they are involved in. You can observe them from a distance and know in your spirit this person has something special. But on the other hand, there's nothing more heartbreaking, painful, and distressing than seeing people with great potential and yet there is a manipulative, unscrupulous, and devious demeanor that clouds everything about them. They are fearful to maximize their God-given talents. They are reluctant to step out on faith and to move in the progressive participle of God's providential guidance, and therefore, they tend to stumble, and they stumble often. Joshua is in the first category in which we describe. Joshua is one of the most captivating books in the entire Bible. On one hand, it relates the story of an ancient Hebrew leader and the people whom God has called him to lead into the promised land. It's a story of potential. It is a story of great expectations that God has for him. And yet it is a personal book in that Joshua obviously, like many of us, though he did not run from the accountability and or the responsibility in which God has given him, but it is obvious to us there was some trepidation about him. Because God has to reiterate in these verses before us, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 9, that he wants Joshua to be strong and of good courage. It is a story about greatness. It is a story about potential. God here takes on the qualities of a coach, of a teacher, of a pastor, and he becomes excited about that which can be done with those who put their trust in him. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited when people step out on faith, believing and trusting that God is going to do something different and unique in 
their lives. I am one who likes to applaud people when they do things they otherwise would not have the nerve to do. I am a cheerleader for those who are willing to step outside of their comfort zone knowing that God has called them to do something different. It makes us question whether or not we are living up to our full potential. I know that you're gifted. I know that you're talented family, but the fact of the matter is, are you living up to your full potential? And more importantly, are we living up to God's expectation? It had to have been intimidating to have been the second lieutenant to the great Hebrew leader, Moses, which Joshua had been. And during the 40 years of following the exodus from Egypt, Joshua, the Bible tells us, this young man, he first appears as an Israelite general in the battle against Amalek in Exodus chapter 17. And then he is Moses's assistant in Exodus chapter 24 and Exodus chapter 32. In Exodus chapter 33 verse 11, the Bible describes Joshua as a young man. His primary achievement in life during the wilderness experience was serving as one of the 12 spies. He was sent out to survey the promised land in Numbers chapter 13 and 14. The Bible tells us that he came back with a brother by the name of Caleb and he gave a minority report. Yeah, we, we got to unpack some things. Let, let me educate, and then we'll celebrate here in a minute. Uh, he came back with a minority report, and though he knew the task would be monumental, he believed that God in his ultimate wisdom and power and authority would give unto them the land that he had shown them. But the Bible says that the other 10 spies thought differently. The Bible says that they came back and they rejected the premise of Joshua and Caleb. And the rest, as they say, is history. And now 40 years have passed, wandering in the wilderness. And Joshua has been faithful. He has been dedicated. He has been devoted. And now the great Moses has transitioned to be with the Lord. And God puts his hand on Joshua that Joshua would be the new leader, the new influencer, the new front runner for the Hebrew people. This is Joshua's come up time. And I am convinced that out of the ashes of circumstances in 2020, that there will be some leaders, some influencers, and some front runners in the kingdom of God, that God has prepared you for a time such as this, that there are some things that God is going to put you in, that he is going to place before you, that you can't even begin to imagine the greatness in which God is going to operate in your life. Can you imagine the mindset of Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 1 through 5 where God declares unto him, my man, my friend, my boy, Moses is now dead. But guess what? It's now your time to step up and influence and lead and be the front runner for the Hebrew people. Is there anybody in here that can relate to the fact? Is there anybody online that can understand for a moment that every 
everything you've been through has prepared you for this moment. Joshua was faithful. Joshua was kind. Joshua was a servant. And now God is saying, I'm getting ready to elevate you and use you at a different level. You've been thinking about starting a business. Well, this is your year. You've been thinking about going back to school, getting your graduate degree. Well, this is your year. Everything you do shall prosper as long as you be strong and of good courage. Joshua stepping into the purpose and the plan that God has determined for him. And family, I'm telling you, this is your year. But in order to do what God is requiring of us this year, it will demand a different level of determination, a different level of fortitude, a different level of resolve. But we can do it, family. We can do it, family. We can do it, family, if we are mindful of several things. Great advice for advancing in 2021. There are some things that if we are able to grab a hold of them, and if we're able to walk with them and keep them ever before us, I believe, we will accomplish great things for the kingdom this year. Why? Because we have some things at our disposal. Some things that are available to us to help us move forward. Well, well what are they, Pastor? What are they? L let's go to the text and let's debunk and disentangle that which is before us. Verse 6 tells us to be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Here's the first thing family we have God's promises. We have God's promises. We have God's promises. We have God's promises. The Bible tells us that God has expressed some things within the first five verses that would cause the average believer to shake in their boots. There must have been anxiety. There must have been nervousness. There must have been concern. There must have been apprehension on the part of Joshua. But God offers a stabilizing, conditional command to Joshua that if Joshua is going to experience the realization of verses 1 through 5, he must be strong and of good courage. These two indelible qualities that must be concretized in the mind of the believer that desires to fulfill the expectation of God. The Hebrew word for strong, kauzak, it is a verb and it means to fasten upon, it means to seize, it means to constrain and it means to bind. The same primitive root word is used in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 50, where the Bible tells us that David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and that he smote the Philistine. The Philistine was bigger than David. The Philistine had more experience in battle than David, but the Bible says that David prevailed against the Philistine. And there 
is an opportunity this year for us to understand that there are going to be some things that create some challenges in our lives. That there are going to be some things that's going to create some frustration in our lives. There are going to be some things that create doubt in the lives of God's people. But the Bible says David prevailed against Goliath. In other words, David seized and constrained the giant and smote him. Be mindful, family, of the report that took place 40 years before this conversation that God is having with Joshua. The Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, and there we saw the giant giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were in their sight. When you grab a hold of the promises of God, you have to deal with some giants in your life. They're going to be in your path. They're going to be in your mind. They're going to pop up all over and around you but as a believer in God when God promises that you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors to give unto them that means that there ain't a devil in hell that can stop you from doing what God has promised you you he would do somebody ought to shout right there I'm grabbing hold of God's promises he says that you are the one he says that you are the one he says that you are the one and as long as God says you're the one guess what you are the one in spite of the giants <laughs> that's going to pop up in your life. Fear and intimidation are great giants in which we must confront and conquer if we're going to maximize our full potential in 2021. I cannot advance the way that God would have me to do if I allow the giants of distress and the giants of pressure to bully me, to torment me, to oppress me into believing that the task is too great. I have to be strong, have to have resolve. But God goes on to say, be strong and of good courage. Good courage, all mats in the Hebrew, means to be alert physically and to be alert mentally. It means to be steadfastly minded. And if the truth be told, we have some weak-minded individuals in the kingdom. We got people who are dozing off when they ought to be alert. We have people who are falling by the wayside when they ought to be steadfast. We have people who are using excuses in order not to go forth and the power and the promises and the authority of God. Being able to do that which God wants of us. The enemy, the enemy's first point of attack is to attempt to negatively impact our thinking and 
or our mind. If he can create some doubt, some hesitation, some uncertainty, Minister Harris, within us, he gains footing in our lives. You can remember, Sister Pierre, the first mention of him in the Bible, the dialogue that takes place between him and Sister Eve, where he is operating merely under the, the, regra the regrain of uh, earthly wisdom. He is operating in an earthly realm in the conversation with Sister Eve because unless we inflate him higher than he really is, everything he does is from an earthly and a carnal perspective. God's wisdom is omniscient. God's wisdom is all encompassing, but the devil's wisdom is but earthly with many limitations. But he inquires of Eve, yea, hath God said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. And so the mental gamesmanship began. And trust me when I say he has no new tricks and he has no new strategies. He can only rely on that which he's done in the past. So as God is promising you some things this year, don't be surprised. Don't be shocked when you hear the enemy whisper in your spirit, yea, hath God said? Hath God said to get married? Has God said to reconcile your marriage? Has God said to stay in that ministry? Has God said to take that job? Has God said to get rid of those friends? Has God said to step out on faith? You ought to stand back every time he utters those words in your direction and remind him, yes, my God has said. And I'm resting, I'm relying, I'm grabbing hold of the promises of my God. You ought to praise God right there. I said you ought to praise God right there. The Bible says be strong and of good courage. Good courage requires being mentally and physically alert. In today's vernacular, Minister Parker, we would say stay woke. Yeah, yeah, stay woke because there's going to be a lot of stuff happening in 2021. You, you better stay woke. You better stay alert. You better stay on your game. Be, be focused on what God is doing because the enemy, when he comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. If you're going to have a bang up, blow out 2021, let me give you some advice for advancing in 2021. The first thing that we have to think about, if we're going to be strong and of good courage, we can do it because we have God's promises. Promises. But secondly, we have God's precepts. Yeah, his precepts. All you got to do is look at the banner behind me. You can see where I'm going. Amen. Yeah, you, you may be able to call out my points, but you can't unpack it like I unpack it. Amen. The precepts, the precepts of God. The Bible says, be strong, verse 7, and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful. In everything you do. Verse 8 says, study this book of instruction continually. Yeah. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. God tells Joshua to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. 
that ye may prosper wherever you go. The Christian life, the Christian walk, Sister Grant, is difficult. It's difficult. It's challenging because we want all the goodies, but we don't want to make any sacrifices. Let, let's be real. We are called to live lives of obedience before God. If there is too much American Christianity today that is geared to getting what we want to satisfy our own personal pleasures. But I am convinced in 2021 that people are hungry to hear an honest word from the Lord. I believe that people want to hear that which is unadulterated, untainted, and undefiled. I believe that there are church folk that are tired of blaming God for everything that goes wrong in their lives. The problem the problem is that they have been sold a bill of goods. They have been bombarded with religious teaching in the media and in popular self-help books that convince them that God is a spiritual wish granter whose sole purpose is to bring us personal pleasure. It's easy to compartmentalize one's life obeying God where obedience comes easy and doing what one wants to do in those areas when obedience would demand self-denial. But God sets the record straight. He says, be careful to obey all the instructions that Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. And then you you will be successful in everything you do. Moses did not share with Joshua things from Moses' playbook, but it was from the playbook, from the guidebook of God. I am tired of so-called believers. I am tired of so-called preachers. I'm tired of so-called pastors sharing philosophies, methodologies, and ideology that is based on their own experience or their own way of thinking. But when you begin to direct the people, God is saying to Joshua, make sure you follow the instructions. Make sure you keep the playbook in front of you. Make sure you rely on and reference what thus saith the Lord. The next time somebody gives you advice that seems a little iffy, that seems a little shady, ask them, where is that in the Bible? Because if it ain't in the Bible, it's not in the playbook of my life. I want to do the things that please my God. I want to hear God speak to me. I want God to tell me when to go and where to go and how to go and with whom to go with. Stop listening to Dr. Phil. Stop listening to Ellen DeGeneres. Stop listening to Oprah Winfrey. Stop listening to Steve Harvey and listen to what thus said, 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 said, God, the true and the living God. We not only have God's promises, but we have God's precepts. God goes on to say in verse 8, study this book of instruction continually. He says to meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. I cannot begin to tell you, family, how many mistakes I have made because I tried to find God's will for my life without consulting the guidebook. How much pain we've experienced at those points in which we have not consulted with the word 
of God. It's important, family, that we share some of those expectations and experiences with other folk. Somehow, some of us have bought into the concept that as a child of God, we cannot show vulnerability and transparency as it pertains to our opportunities, or dare I even say, our weaknesses. So let me be vulnerable for a moment. Let, let me share with you, and I pray you don't hold it against me. I am one who invests a lot of money in consumer goods. But if I'm honest with you, I never, ever read the owner's manuals. As a matter of fact, I have a drawer at home full of owner's manuals still in the plastic. Some people would say, well, that's foolish because, and it is because at a later date, I will ask the question of my wife and my daughters, why is this not working the way it's supposed to? And they will inevitably ask me, did you read the manual on how to operate it. Let me tell you as I parenthetically digress. If you want to know how to have a successful, promising, and prosperous relationship with the people of God, have you read the owner's manual? If you want your marriage to be all that is possible to be, have you read the owner's manual? Do you want to raise your children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord have you read the owner's manual do you want all of the best things that come in this life the abundant life that Jesus promises to us have you read the owner's manual we have God's promises. But not only do we have God's promises, we have God's precepts. David said in Psalm 119 and 11, I have laid up thy word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hmm. I cannot afford to stray away from the Word of God. Can I give you some advice for advancing in 2021? Read the Word of God. Study it. Meditate on it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit at the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law doth he meditate day and night. If we're going to advance, if we're going to be all that God would have us to be in 2021, we have to grab a hold of some things. The first thing we got to grab a hold of is God's promises. God promised Joshua some things, but it required that he be strong and of good courage. But not only do we have the promises of God, we have the precepts of God. If you want to know what God is thinking, read the owner's manual. <laughs> if you want to know what God is doing, read the owner's manual. If you want to know how God is moving around and his plans, just read the owner's manual. We have God's precept. But then here's the final one, family, and we're done, we're done, we're done. Verse 9, verse 9 says, this is my command. This is not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. God says, let me be clear, this is my command. Not just to Joshua, but also to his people. Those of us who are in the kingdom. He says, be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We have the promises of God. We have the precepts of God. But finally, we have the presence of God. To be mindful of God's presence is to develop a trust and dependence upon him that you otherwise would not have. To know that God is with me creates a level of fearlessness and boldness to help me walk into the promises of God, knowing that he will not leave me nor forsake me. This is not egotism. This is not self-centeredness. This is not vanity. This is not conceit. No, this is taking God at his word. This is depending on God to not be my backup, but to be my guide. Yeah, yeah, too many of us want God to be our backup. God just just back me up. No, God ain't your backup. He's the guide. He's the one leading. He's not on your priority list. He's at the top of your priority list because he is present with us. Are you humble enough, family, in 2021 to ask God to order your steps? Are you faithful, family, enough in 2021 to declare unto God, I will go wherever you send me? Are you spiritually perceptive enough, family, in 2021 to be still and know that God is working some things out for his glory and for your benefit. You cannot be afraid. You cannot be discouraged as God maneuvers and advances you in 2021. As long as I know that God is with me, there ain't a devil that can stop me from accomplishing and fulfilling the purpose in which God has created me in the first place. I am fully aware that there will be some hurdles. I'm fully aware that there will be some potholes. I'm fully aware that there will be some distractions. I'm fully aware that there will be some interferences. But nevertheless, giving up, nevertheless, falling by the wayside, nevertheless, quitting, nevertheless, giving in, that is not a part of my persona. It's not a part of my mindset. It is not an option in 2021. We got to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Advice for advancing in 2021. Be strong and of good courage. Why? Because we have God's promises. God has promised to do some things for you this year that you otherwise would never, ever be able to. To accomplish. So you have to grab a hold of God's promises and walk with them. Great advice for advancing in 2021. Be strong and of good courage. Why? Because we have God's precepts. God has an expectation that we rely on, depend on, and lean into his word. This is the fulfillment of the promise of God written in the owner's manual. And I'm telling you, if you want to draw closer to God this year, you ought to get into his word. I am telling you, there are things in his word when the Holy Spirit begins to speak into your spirit 
he begins to uncover some things and to reveal some things that will literally blow your mind. Great advice for advancing in 2021. Be strong and of good courage. Why, Pastor? Because we have God's presence. God has promised us he'll never leave us nor forsake us. The psalmist says that in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of Do you ever wonder how it is some people just keep on rolling and keep on rolling and they never seem to let anything get them down? They just, they have power and authority. They're excited. They have the energy. and They just keep on pushing and keep on pushing. Those are people who are aware that God is with them. And there is nothing impossible. This year, family, we're going to have some issues. We're going to have some problems. Let me tell you, it's already starting. We're only a couple of days in. It's already starting. But I'm telling you, we're going higher. We're going further. We're going faster than we've ever been before. And if you receive that, you ought to give God some crazy, 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 crazy praise. God's going to do something this year. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. He's going to push your wig back. He's going to wrinkle up your suit. We're going places this year we ain't never been before doing things we've never done before. But we have to be strong. And of good courage. But if you're listening to us today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I'm telling you, you're already behind the eight ball. Yeah, you, you, you've stepped into this year unarmed. You've stepped into this year already operating in a deficit. You've stepped into this year deficient as it pertains to meeting your potential and the expectations of God. God's expectation before he can speak into your life, before he can take you higher than you've ever been, you have to accept him as Lord and Savior. What better way to start the year off? I I'm telling you, I, I know I got saved in April of 1991. I don't know if it was first Sunday or second Sunday or Thursday. But let me tell you, if you get saved on the first Sunday of 2021, that's a day you'll never, ever forget. If you're with us today, you're watching and you're not saved, listen, this prayer is for you. Bow and pray with us. God, how we thank and praise thee for the opportunity to come before thy presence once again, to share thy word, to share in fellowship, even with minimal numbers. But knowing that there are people watching and praying for us across many states and even in other countries. But God, we know we, we, we have wisdom from on high, God. You've enlightened our minds to know that not everybody who is watching is saved. Not everybody who's watching has surrendered their lives unto you. So God, we pray even now that there would be a conviction of their heart and their minds. Holy Spirit, tug, pull, drag their consciousness into knowing that Jesus died for them to have this opportunity. And that if they're willing to confess with their mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if they're willing to believe in their heart, in their being, that God has raised him from the dead, they will be saved. They have just stepped out of darkness 
into the marvelous light and the angels in heaven are rejoicing. God, we give you praise, honor, and glory for that which you've done. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and praise God, family. We prepare to get out of here. Woo. Listen, family, we love you. We appreciate you. I don't know if you've heard, there have been some very unfortunate dynamics that have taken place with COVID. Other places in California, I have friends who own restaurants in San Francisco. San Francisco announced this morning that the closure of restaurants, in dining and outdoor dining will stay in effect indefinitely. That's not a good sign. That means other people will adopt that same philosophy, mentality. We are not out of the weeds as it pertains to COVID-19. I would ask that you be mindful and respectful to please isolate yourself. Don't take chances and infect other people because of your waywardness for your disregard and for your respect of others. We're praying for you. We ask that you continue to pray for us. Listen, family, in 2021, in spite of the alienation, in spite of the attacks, and in spite of the antagonism, we're going to be strong and we're going to be of good courage. Amen. God bless you, family. We love you.